this old house series for this summer. I'm Crystal Medical and I represent the Point Roberts Library and in conjunction with the Historical Society we're putting on these uh, <coughs> weekly programs about Point Roberts old homes, old houses. Last week we did this building and that was nice because we could walk around it. Um, unfortunately we won't be doing that but um, this is the way. And uh, we have a, a very kind volunteer, Valerie Remedios. She has a, a lot of pictures about a uh, family cabin in Boundary Bay, the Blair family. And so I'm going to let her begin. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, the cabin I'm going to speak about with my grandparents. And my cousin Barbara is here today, too, so that's good. There's Two heads. I'm just one of the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Should we shut up the listeners? I don't. That doesn't bother me. Okay. Okay. Um, I I just use pictures that I have, and they're all framed, and I'm going to talk about them and then pass them around, and then they can all end up on the table here, I think. So I'll tell you a bit about it. It's 2151 Roosevelt, and that's the very end of Roosevelt, where it comes down to the beach. It's the last place. And if you rush out after this and go and see it, you can't see a thing because the new people have put a fence around it, a serious fence. You can't even peek through the boards. So this is as good as it gets to see the place. Um, and that kind of makes me sad because I'd like to look at it, you know. But anyway, um, so it's the end, end, of, the, end of Roosevelt. And um, we always called it the camp. Just, it's the camp. And that's what it was. But. Um, at the front, just over the door, there was a little piece of wood, and it was nicely painted, and it was uh, word Keswick on it, K-E-S-W-I-C-K. And it's Keswick, if you just look at it, but it was pronounced Keswick. And it's believed that was the word from Scotland. Our grandfather was from Scotland, and this may have been his family home or his family village, I don't know, but that's the name. But nobody ever, nobody ever called it that name at all, but it was there. And when we sold it, Barb's mother took that little sign, and it's at their place today. So that's that's it. And we still don't call that place Keswick, do we? No. But we got the sign, so that's good. So um, um, actually, there are two lots there. The next one, um, my grandfather bought as well. So there's like a large space to the towards the beach, and that was all enclosed, and that was all one property. <coughs> And we use that for baseball games, or sometimes people come there and picnic out. Sometimes we had people picnicking there that were total strangers. They just saw the land and put out a blanket and had a picnic. <laughs> and we said, oh, we didn't make any noise about that. So, you know, we didn't want to embarrass them. But, you know, that's, that's how it is. Um, apparently, it, this piece got started because um, my grandfather suggested it would be nice to go there and lots of people were doing this and, and um, my grandmother allegedly said, <coughs> I have a baby and I'm not going to spend summer in a tent going down there and with a baby <coughs> and that was my mother and so that was the end of the conversation. I guess my grandfather got busy because this place got built and I don't think he built it, he probably hired somebody to build it and so that my mother was born in 1911 so figure out the age of the place from that. That's the only sure date I can give you, 1911, when she was born, and she was the eldest of five. Um, <clears throat> I remember your mom saying that in Easter, sometimes they would come down to check it all out. And at the back of the backyard, they would find logs from winter storms, and they would be in the backyard from there. So before the wall, <laughs> and there's big storms, the waves would go that far inland, and um, that would have been a pretty big flood. Um, there were three cabins in a row, and this was the, being the first one that was ours. The next cabin belonged to my, my uh, mother's um, grandparents, and they were in the next place. And beyond that was another cabin, and that belonged to my aunt and uncle. So you've got three, mem three family members in a row. And then at the back, facing these cabins, were some more cabins on Alder Street, and they were relatives too. 
So we were surrounded by, by family. In between was not a beautiful lawn. It was just bush and trails and whatever was there. Nobody ever did lawns till now. So that was, that was a nice space. Um, it had one toilet. It never had a shower. It, I don't think it had a hot water tank. Maybe later, I don't, it had never had a hot water tank. There were two bedrooms <coughs> and a fireplace and a little the kitchen on the side. And um, it worked. It just, it worked, you know. And around the house was a big veranda. And that was the saving grace, I think, that veranda. Yeah. And oh, in the back, there was a little kind of a space for the one poor brother, four sisters, got to sleep there. They had two bedrooms. And the neatest thing I remember was being in these bedrooms. And it didn't have, they didn't have doors. They had a, just a curtain that hanging in the space. And you pull it across so you could have some privacy to get out of your bathing suit. That was all, you know, that was the doors. And I always thought that was so cool, just cool. Because when you're put to bed at night and all the adults are in the living room, you can just lay there and hear everything they're saying. <laughs> and we don't know, kids are listening. And I thought that was so cool. <laughs> Do you remember the curtains, Bob? There were no, there were no you're doors. You're doing a great job. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you must have listened to. I hope you're fine to be doing this. No, it's okay. My mother's job was to get water every morning from the Wayland's farmhouse, because there was no water at the beginning. And she also had to clean all the coal oil lamps in every morning. That was her job. So here, now I'll show you a picture. This picture is hard to sort of see, but this is the front door, and it's looking to Canada. So that, you get the bearings there. That, that's still okay. So um, some of the men could probably figure out what kind of car that was. But um, you can see that the, there's sort of an archway, and there's like these poles going up to the side, and they went all around the property, these raised poles, and that was considered a fence. And that's probably why people just went into the vacant lot and had a picnic. You know, they didn't know any better. So, so, so um, I pass that round, okay? And then this is the better picture. This one, okay? This is a veranda. It was facing the beach. This faced the beach. And it was big and wide. It had a corner for um, sleeping. Extra bodies got put out there to sleep overnight. And um, it, was, <coughs> it was roomy. Everybody could be out there. You could put kids out there in a rainy day to color and play on and ride their little bikes. So it was really the perfect spot by accident, the perfect spot. Um, so you could look from the house, you could look straight out through the veranda, and you could see the beach, and you found out the most important things you needed to know every day. The tides out, or the tides in, <laughs> right? That's what you needed to know, and you could organize your day. So, um, what else? This bench across the front here, this, this, it was the perfect, perfect bench. It was the perfect height to um, climb over if you were a kid. It had a nice wide board, and you could put little kids up to it and put a plate out and they could eat their dinner. And you could climb over it and hop off. It was a perfect, wasn't it perfect, bar? Perfect proportions, and who knew when they made it, but perfect. So that was, yeah. and um, I have a later, later photo of this veranda in function, and you can see it was really good. This was the saving grace of the, of the place. It worked for everybody, so. <laughs> and there was, the, li the living room was sort of in the middle, but the problem with the living room, it had five doors. Uh, you know, how can you, you could, could never arrange the furniture. It had a nice fireplace, but five doors? Oh, you know, so um, being out on the veranda worked well. well. And um, we could sit on that, on that bench and watch the roller rink and um, people skating on the roller rink. And, um, and we could look at baseball games in the, in the vacant lot. So okay, that's, that's going around, okay. This third one is kind of, full, kind of fuzzy to see. Do you remember this, Bob? This one is a big picnic and on a Sunday because everybody's dressed white. 
see how nice, all dressed nice and white. There's no laundry, there's no washing machines, there's no <laughs> clean water, but everybody dressed nicely on Sundays. And this is a celebration. And it says here, a big sign in the tree, and it says Charlie. And I figure that Uncle Charlie came home from World War I alive. So they're all celebrating. So you're, there's a date there, 1919, 1918. So Charlie came home. And he was married to one of my mother's aunts, our mother's aunt. And in the center right here, you can see a lady with the little kids. That would have been our grandmother. And my mom's in there, and, and younger brothers and sisters are there, too. And um, everybody's wearing white. And the men have ties. <laughs> and, and the Union Jack, I guess everybody was still cheering for England, who won the war. Okay. Yeah. So that's that one. <laughs> this is um, four of... Um, the kids. This was my mom here, and this is my Uncle Jack, or Uncle Jack, and this is Barb's mom, Mark, and this is Auntie Frank. I think I got that right. No, this is Mark. The one that's scowling is usually my mom. No, she's smiling. Yeah, your mom's smiling. So um, the fence behind is the border, and you don't see any. Um, <laughs> that's Canada in the end over there. That's across the street from our cabin. And um, so this is before Metcalfs, and before there was that sports club, and there was no tower at the point there either. See, it's really old. <laughs> and you'll notice the bathing suits. I remember your mom saying that every time they come back next year, all the bathing suits were hanging there from last summer. And all the crotches were rotted out. <laughs> they weren't really... Probably that's when it, it just rotted out. <laughs> so the bathing suits weren't good. They were knit. Yeah, knit fabric, yeah. So these are the gourmet bathing suits that they all had. So um, so there were five all together, but there's four of, the, of them. And um, these are the same four kids in a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Frank. Jack, my mom, and Mark, right here. And the fellow who's got them on the wheelbarrow is George Rennie. And uh, he's uh, married to a, one of their relatives. They, he and his wife never had children. And he loved children. So he rented everybody else's out. And everybody loved him. And um, when my sister and I were older, we got to know him too as kids. And we loved him too. He was just the neatest guy. And here, he's got a whole load of kids in a wheelbarrow. You know where he's going? To the beach to get firewood. <coughs> and you take a bunch of kids and they collect it for you. Right? So I love that picture. It's George. There, that's a good one. I think he played on the, the salmon bellies in the U.S. No, she's the, that's her mom. And that she's the, um, Second from the bottom. There's one more baby coming. Lala. Lala's in that picture over there. Here's all of them. There's five kids and two cousins here. And they're all sitting on a log. I don't know just which where. Sorry, you can't see, but. But um, this boy and this boy are cousins. First cousins are there. Alan and Bill. And there's the baby. Finally, there's number five, child number five. They're all sitting on the log. The log they're sitting on is that what I told you about, you know, how it wasn't a fence, but there was these logs in the air went around, around the property, and they're sitting on the log. So you see, people wouldn't, um, wouldn't uh, be able to drive onto the land, but they could they'd know that this was a boundary. But if you wanted to come in and have a picnic on the, on the grass, just, you know, duck under the log. So... I like that picture. And they're wearing their old baby suits. My mom is maybe 10 or 11 years old, so it would be 19, um, you know, 11 plus 1920 or something like that. So that's that. This picture is, um, this is, this is our great-grandmother. 
my mother's grandmother. And she's happy and leaning over a fence there. She lived next door to the cabin that we're talking about. And um, <coughs> she died before, before my mother was married. We never knew her, but we just know her as Bama Reed, right? Bama Reed. And um, <coughs> so um, they lived next door to us. And she would have been my great grandmother. And I sat down and figured it out that my, our, my, my grandchildren make it that we're here for six generations. Yeah, from her down to our grandchildren. I, I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. So six generations we've been coming here. Um, my mother said she was the greatest grandmother because you could come in and if you only had one clam, she'd get up and she'd make you clam chowder. What? <laughs> now that's a generous... That's a great... Yeah. yeah. And you get remembered for it too. So that's Bama Reed. Okay. Oh, this one. Here's the roller rink. My mom grew up a bit, and she's at the roller rink, okay? And the little huts behind were picnic huts. I guess Wayans had made them, and there was a picnic table and a little roof over it, and people could just come, the public could come and picnic there and have a nice day's outing instead of picking a picnic on our place. <laughs> they could have come to one of these. So um, that was around the roller rink, and... Um, my mom's got a big smile there about about it. Yes, yeah, they owned the roller rink. Um, I remember the place. I remember the music playing all day. Um, the side walls were like wire, so you could. The important thing was you could see through the roller rink, and you could see if the tide was in and out. That's what you needed to know. So the roller rink was okay as long as you could see through it and check on the thigh. And um, my mom is smiling here in this picture. But I have to tell you, all my life I've heard my mother grinding her teeth about that roller rink. Yeah. Because the music came on at 10 in the morning and it went off at 10 at night. And it played all day. You couldn't get away from it. And she always insisted that it drove her mother out of her mind. You couldn't turn it off. No. But yeah, it was it was okay. But when you can't get away from it and you don't have a car, you know that's why she and Dad like to go over and hang out at Lighthouse Park just to get away from the music. So. Uh, Dorothy, actually, but Dode is what she went by. This is um, a postcard that I framed, and it's addressed, my mom's growing up, see, my mom has a boyfriend, and he sent her a postcard at, <coughs> at, um, at the point, and it's written on the back, see, I, I framed the post, I can see it, and it's 1932, so now she's got a boyfriend, okay, and it's addressed to Wayland Store, Boundary Bay, Point Roberts, Washington. So, and it's got a two cent stamp on it. My, um, her boyfriend became my dad, <laughs> and he was living in North Vancouver. And he would trek all the way out here. And back. He loved it here. So, that's one. But this is even better. So, when, the, um, when my, our parents went, there were eight letters that he wrote to her while she was here, and she saved the letters from him. And my sister and I read them all. <laughs> And there's no mush in any of them. <laughs> but we read the letters. So I got them framed four for me and four for my sister. And you can open and you can go in and read them. But I thought you'd like to see it because of how it's addressed to her. And you can read um, that some of them were addressed to Wayland's store and two of them were addressed to Water's store, which would be a bit of a distance to get your mail to, from that side to that side. Water's store is on this side. 
Yes. So that's a bit a bit farther away. Yeah. Waters and Stork and Waylands. Yeah. I don't know, but I thought the addresses were neat to see them there. And that would be 1930s. My parents married in 1936, I think it was. He married in 1936. And um, this picture is taken in 1941 here. And this is myself here and my mom and a friend. And we're at the beach. So what's interesting here is the wall. It's wood. And big, it was big logs to keep the, keep the protect the place. And um, what I, I remember that wall. And the thing I remember about it is you'd, you'd come and you'd sort of sit on it. And you'd look at the beach and just sit there. Finally, you decided to go down on the beach. And you'd slide off the logs, go down on the sand. And you always had splinters in the back of your legs. Oh, didn't you? oh big slivers. So... So that's 1941. I was born in 1940. So that's my mom. And then this picture of me, also out on the sandbars, 1941. And not because I'm beautiful, but I want you to see, see the footwear. My mother must have been out of her mind. Whoever goes on the sandbars with white shoes and white socks. <laughs> I think that's what they did. I think because I was the first child, you know, she felt. She never went out like that on the sand. Yeah, but she's out of her mind. And it reminded me of that, remember that shoe polish, it? She would have to fuss around, but she was out of her mind. But I'm happy, I'm on the sand bar. Got those shoes. You didn't have to on No, but she's totally crazy to do that. She's crazy. This is the picture that's really, really good. This is the cabin, my, our grandfather's cabin. And this was Father's Day 1950. I, I mentioned that. And he is here with the hat. That's our, we call him Da, D-A, Da. And he's so happy because everybody's there. Aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody, we're all there. There were 10 of us cousins. And mostly all of them were there, aunts, aunts and uncles that were born then. Yeah, there was more to come. And um, we're all there. There's Barbara right here. There's my sister right there. And that's me sitting on the table. And aunts and here getting dinner, of course, getting the meal. And um, so that was Father's Day. And that's the kind of thing my grandfather loved the best. When everybody was there, just hanging up. He just... Your other grandfather. Yeah, no, but this is the one where looking at today. He, it was his place. And then my grandmother, our, our grandmother died um, three months before I was born. And I was, um, uh, I was the first grandchild. So she never met any of her grandchildren. And, um, you know, my, my mom really felt bad about that, you know, because <coughs> here she was coming to be a grandmother. And she had a stroke and never recovered from that. And my mom blames the roller rink for that. Oh, oh she always did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's Sandy and Margot here, everybody. And uh, aunts, as Michael Jack, and Frank, and Mark, they're all here, all of them. So that's a good one of the porch really functioning well for that cabin. And the five, the five layer kids. Um, when my when my grandfather died, it it was agreed that, to sell it, and one of the five bought it, and everybody was okay with that, and they had it for I don't know maybe eight years, <laughs> and that was fine. And then they decided to build another cabin of their own on Alder Street, and so it was agreed that this this camp would be sold, and everybody was fine with that. Nobody. Nobody ever grumbled about it. It was time to let it go. So it went to other people, and, um, and we're still okay with that. It's no longer ours. Other people were growing up, and Barb's mom and dad, they were getting their own places about around Point Roberts, and we all gra gra gravitated to those other places. And my Uncle Jack here, 
he had a place at Freeman Beach. And he lived there mostly whenever he could. So that's my Uncle Jack and Mark as far as and they are up there by the by the roof house. They had a place up there. And French, they had a place on Alder Street. And Lala had didn't ever have a place. And that's my mother. And uh, we never had a, a place until about 20 years ago. So that's all five of them. And um, this was the first one. The youngest one was the first one to die. So they're all gone now. But these are the five of the, the Blair kids. And this is taken at my Uncle Jack's place on at Freeman Beach. And he, he just loved it there. And one of his, his two of his kids have, has that place to this day. So that's them. And this is another last picture of my Uncle Jack in his place. You remember that? Do you remember him in there? You don't remember him? Don't you? Oh, I thought you were. I thought you knew. So he just loved being being there the most, didn't he? Or he just really loved it. Very, very, a cool dude, a cool dude. When, he, when my mom, my dad was dating my mom, um, you know, he, they'd, they'd go places. And, you know, and then my dad would look, he says, finally after a couple of dates, he says to my mom, what's wrong with me? And she said, what do you mean? She says, well, every time I take you out, I look around, and as soon as I look around, Jack is there. Why, why, why is he always here? What is it about me that your family doesn't trust me taking you out? And they always send Jack to follow up and look out for you. And she said, no. She said, he's not, he's not checking up on you. He, he wants to know where we go because you've got the neatest places to go and dance. Oh, oh said my dad. That's okay. <laughs> so, but Jack and my, um, my dad got on really, really well. So. That's lots of laughs, lots of stories in a good family, isn't yeah, it? Lots of good stories. Special, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's it. Have we got some questions here? Can I just add something to this? Yeah, Bob's got stuff to say. Yes, no, I don't mean to interrupt. I think you've done an amazing job. Um, for those of you that might still have pictures of your cabin, I remember my mom talking about our grandmother, who we didn't know. But when it came to the cabin, every year she would get her pot of red paint and paint everything red. Remember the glass window doors that are yeah. you might see on the on the point from the porch inside the cabin? There were little panes of glass, all painted red. A lot of different furniture, furniture outside of red. A bright, bright red. A nice red. A lot of everything. She repainted at the start of every side. And those furniture pieces are still red. Yeah. 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 Well, I know my parents were good friends with Jack Blair and his wife. Uh, we went to visit them down in Freeman Beach. And that was a uh, good friend. I think Mom went to visit them for, until she couldn't drive anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was great. Well, that was wonderful to, to hear. And thank you, Valerie. Mm -hmm. and Any more questions? I wonder when they put the, the fence uh, along the bay. It looks like a looks like the fence you put up in the prairies to stop snowdrifts or something. It looks like a useless fence. Well, it was because you know the tide would come right up over it. But yeah, interesting. Do you? Um, how many of your family members still live on the road? We don't, we're not Americans, we don't live here, but um, oh. we've got places around here. Um, I have a place, my sister has a place, Barbara's got your mom's place. Jack's place is owned by two of his kids. Um, and Sandy and Marva have a place too. So there's four or five places of us around the neighborhood. And, and who, who is it that owned the place to put the fence up? The I don't know, I think there's been two since we sold it. I see. My sister may know them a bit. I was yeah. thinking back, yeah. back in when I was a teenager, there was a, or a young hamburger, one, hamburgers or something. There was a restaurant there, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We were told that. Because I, I can remember going down there, and you know, we were always checking out to see if there was something new. Yeah. Do you remember the No.
Mm. No, I, we, when it was sold, it, it, we didn't really connect with it at all anymore. It was, it was gone, and we and and my, my my family, my husband, my mom, and dad didn't have a place here. But we always came, and if you bring your own dinner, you're welcome. You put it on the table with everybody else's room. You're welcome. You're always welcome. And so that's how it works. That still works. So we bought a we bought a Bert and I bought a place 20 years ago on Bert Street, and um, we sort of slinked around and found a place. And we, then we told my mom that we had a place. I have never seen my mother go so crazy happy. She was doing cartwheels. Mm -hmm. We've got a place. We've got a place. And she it was the best thing we did for her. She had early Parkinson's at the time. And she'd come down and stay with us. And she'd go to the wall. And she'd hang out at the wall, walking up and down the wall. Of course, she knew everything. She knew everybody. She knew everything. And she'd meet people and talk with them. And she really, she was 10 years younger. We're so glad we did that for her. We did it for ourselves. But seeing how much it meant to her. One day she came home to supper with us and she said, you'll never guess what happened to me today. I had an adventure. And she said, I went in the old camp. Yes, she got in the old. She talked to somebody at the wall and she got an invitation and she went into the old camp. I would love to see yes. And by bedtime, she said, I wish I, I, wish I hadn't done that. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we mm -hmm. But we, we all did, though we did go back with her and saw things. Yeah. From the beach. I don't know if they were beach. Everything was beach. Beach. Mm -hmm. And they were all stones. Mm -hmm. And you come to the next Not the Yeah. So, um, we did go back, like when my mom went back, so the people were very nice, and, and we did go back with her. And they had, in cleaning all the changing the places, they found, moved things, and they saw where Lila signed her name, where nobody ever knew. She signed her name everywhere. And um, we found places where Lila's name was, you know, back of the stove and everything. <laughs> <laughs> my brother just uh, did that in our old town. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have a question? So, it's a place of fun. And it's just the camp. And my poor husband, I'll embarrass him. He grew up in China, and um, during the war, he was they were there. And um, going to camp meant you were a prisoner of war. Mm -hmm. Camp is a four-letter word, in, you know, in his life. And then he met me, and we're all talking about going to the camp. I've got a smile on your face, and it took an awful long time. But now camp is a good word, and we have our own. What do you what do you call yours? Yeah. It doesn't have a name. No, but not a name. You call the cabin. It. The cabin. Yeah. The cabin. I say we're going to the beach for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Kidding? It's November. But you've got a furnace. You've got a furnace. But you're right, though. It has a name. I have a name. Yeah. 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 We knew every room, and we could we're just we can remember everything. We don't need to go. Not a big kitchen. No. And I remember the old irons. You know the flat irons. You're bringing that one. Yeah. The flat irons sitting on the on the stove. That's how the iron chains really work, guys. When we were looking for one, a cabin to buy, we went into ours, the one we did buy. I this is it, and I you know what it was? It had that smell. The smell of wet sand. <laughs> it had the smell. What? I said, no, it's got the smell. <laughs> we have to buy this place. It's got the beach smell. Yeah, the smell of wet sand. And that one. So what happened to the road? It turned into condos. Mm -hmm. Not soon enough. Right? Well, <laughs> now you can't see this. You can't see the beach at all. Yeah, could have been. Could have been. Yeah. I remember as teenagers, we used to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The records wore out. There's a song called Marie. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The one I remember is Pat Boone singing White Silver Sounds. He sings to me every night and I just blast it out. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I, I'm 76, so all my life I've been coming here. And it's, um, well, winter is sort of an annoying interruption. <laughs> so I'm so glad we have our own play. Well, I talked about it, but I might have too. The time we spent, how fortunate we are yeah. to have been here, yeah. not living here, but to have been part of it. Yeah. The song. Yeah. 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 And all the relatives around and, and, the, and the stories. Yeah. And my mom said, I, you know, when we were kids on the beach, there were older relatives, like young singles. And um, she said, they never shooed us away. Like we were brats hanging around with, you know. Just <laughs> hanging all over them. They never shoot us away. The um, young twenty or twenty year old people, and kids remember that kind of thing. And I remember my mom talking about it, um, going over to the breakers. They would often go to the breakers. Mm. She said we'd walk back and we'd get a ride with anybody yeah. because everybody knew you. Yeah. Not that many people do. Yeah. Yeah. There's a white mom that my dad. Yeah. <laughs> We got engaged at Rosie Point. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the big makeup store. <laughs> 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 Maybe I didn't need to know that. <laughs> 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 yeah. And there you are. <laughs> lots, and lots of stories. So. Mm -hmm. It's been good. It's a, it's a gift to be here. We're, we're guests of another country, but it feels like our land too. You know. But not only that, I think we forgot to add to the history mm -hmm. of what's here. Mm -hmm. Well, you've obviously added to what you're doing today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people who have come after us, when we explain what it used to be like, mm -hmm. I remember more thought just as much on this side of the floor and how many. We now we now have um, two grandchildren that are Americans. So you do? Yes, and they're four years old, so um, they can they can keep let us come in if nobody else will let us in. They're Americans. <laughs> well, it's part of the flavor of my harvest that it's always been an Indian and an American place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a joint project. They used to date the other boys that were coming out of the They'd be the old camp. And they'd come down to Roosevelt. But the old cabin. The old cabin. And from where we were, the spot was perfect because we could see them coming. When the old person was there, they would come that way. And then So I'm sure our parents have the same thing mm -hmm. that we did as teenagers. It was just great things to do. Yeah. And they were there much more than we Yeah, my dad came from England when he was eight and um and they lived in um, the North Shore eventually, but he didn't have all that kind of big family life. So he just loved coming here and all these families and relatives and stuff. And it was so much fun for him. He really, really enjoyed it. And um, everybody came and enjoyed it, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. And as a family, we did spend a lot of time as cousins and aunts and uncles together. Yeah. At that time. And then oh, at homes, too. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was for somebody coming as your dad without a lot of time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.